All right, we're here for a really quick video about my mountain bike upgrade. I recently upgraded from my, I recently upgraded from my Trek Y22, Y33, which has XTR on it. It was upgraded actually, we'll go over that back in the day, to specialized stump jumper alloy. And let's talk about the upgrade real quickly. As you can see, this is not a standard Y22. The Y22 came with Dior LX group set mostly. This one was upgraded when the 98 XTR came out. It was upgraded to all XTR, but it also got a new rear triangle. The original rear triangle did not, did not have the cutout here for the newly designed front derailleur. Of course, XTR triple crank set. XTR rear derailleur with the pulley jockey. That was an aftermarket thing. Uh, of course, Spinergy wheels you see here. They help soften the blow a bit. All XTR. Some of the fastest and smoothest pull brakes they had. These were the new parallel pull brakes at that time. Shifters are awesome, fast. Push on the thumb, trigger up front. Fantastic group set. A head, headset, headset. The, the shocks were upgraded, I forgot. I have the box for it with a three stage spring. I think it was an eye box spring. I'll try to find the box for it and splice it in. So here is the eye box spring for mountain bikes, triple stage. Five year warranty, a little bit past that now. Basically tuned based on rise weight, riding style, progressive spring system. So you have soft, medium, hard. The chart right here. Main spring, center spring, tender spring. So basically these are what's in my system. I originally had in there of course, the rubber bumper damper system. Oh look, a bunch of stickers. Look at that. And caps of the spring. Got a full spring system here. Instructions and tuning tips. Yeah, Rock Shock Judy, I believe I have. You can see the right here. I absolutely love this when I put it on here. It was amazing. Such an amazing difference. But that's what's in the bike right now. I absolutely love it. The Fox rear shock had a lot of complaints from people, but I loved it because what I would do is I would pump it up to a point where it was basically a hardtail, except when it got to the moderate to heavy bumps, it then became full suspension. So I had a hardtail and a full suspension bike. I actually loved that setup. It was just super fast. Real quickly, the weight of the bike. There we go. Pull it up. And we get 27.6 pounds. 27.4 pounds. 27.6 pounds. Real quickly, this is the Specialized Stump Jumper Alloy. I just bought about a month ago. It does not have top line equipment like the Trek had. Standard SRAM SX Eagle. Single gear in front as you can see and a large span in the back. Tectro brakes. This is type of shifter where you use thumb to shift up and a thumb to shift down. Tectro Gemini SL brake levers. 
course these are 29ers there's a purgatory grid in the back and I had to upgrade the front tire I had a butcher grid t9 and it went up to a ground control t5 there's a tread difference here these knobbies are very aggressive for the front really truthfully I felt like I was pushing too hard to get this tire going and it's really good for the downhill probably or for rocky areas but for mostly flat trails really flat trails around here this tire just was so much faster than that tire just swapping tires and running a test run I was 20 seconds faster on a four and a half minute loop with these tires and that tire and it wasn't even trying yet weight of this comes in at about 40 pounds 39.4 pounds quite a bit chunkier of course price wise and we're talking 1996 1998 here reason this is XTR this actually was really early XTR 98 Actually, it's probably really early production. Uh, a friend of mine was a bicycle guy and I knew some people with Shimano and they actually had me test this, early production Shimano XTR testing and I absolutely loved it. I had all three front derailers. I think there's three. I think I had a carbon fiber plate one, I had a plate that came from the bottom bracket, an aluminum version one. And then I think there's two versions of the front derailleur. I can't remember, I got like a whole bunch in the box. And I tried the carbon fiber plate one and it wobbled back and forth, which really wasn't very good at that. And this one just fit the bill. But we had to get a new triangle for the bike because the rear triangle was one solid plate here and this required a cutout. And um, so this is a like a 96 Y22 with a 98 rear triangle. And the other other pivot was also worn out, so this really helped the bike immensely. But this I consider a very fast bike. The gearing, if you're going downhill, flats, you got the gearing, got a 46 up front and I think a 12 in the back. You can really move on that one. That's the one downside about this. You got the bigger tires, but you have a 30 up front and maybe, I think it's 11 in the back. <clears throat> on some of these slight downhills I do I can sit in the 30 11 and just kind of not really spin but realize that I'm kind of limited in full speed ahead steam and speed versus that one going uphill I really think I have to upgrade the derailers on this when I first bought this when I first bought this, I was really limited on funds, basically 3,000 max, and this was 2,650 before tax. But um, after it gets paid off, I'm gonna upgrade. Really, I need to upgrade the thumb shifters first. I realize these thumb shifters, you gotta shift, push them to shift up, push it to shift down, and above 70 RPM, they shift fine. Below 70 RPM, these things are just a bear to shift. So I know it's 70 RPM because I have a speed sensor up front now, and I have the RPM sensor on the crank set. So my one negative about the bike is really the shifters is I've had a lot of hand problems and using my thumb for both shifting really gets cramps my hand and gets really tired of my thumb. So I want to go to a trigger mechanism instead. And I may have to go to like a Shimano DX or Shimano XT, in which case I'll have to change not just the shifter, but also the rear derailleur. And I may also have to change the entire cog set and chain, of course. I might as well do the bottom bracket cranks it while I'm at it you know and who knows maybe I'll just do the brake set too while I'm at it 
the brakes i know people complain about the brakes and in really hilly areas if you're in arizona or colorado i can understand how the brakes aren't powerful enough but for around here where it's flat it's actually pretty nice because i can slow down without much of an effort and even though it's really not very progressive you gotta really squeeze on to get the brakes on it's perfect for around here because it's mostly flat and small up and small downhills really nothing like colorado arizona out in the east coast so it works pretty good so right now no complaints about the brakes but about the shifting below 70 rpm shifting stinks and i really want to go to a first finger trigger like you have on this in current shimano equipment trigger up front and thumb here I want to hear comments about what you think about this upgrade. I mean, this was a very fast bike. I've been using Strava now for a very long time, and I've only used this a few times in the one place I go, and this Specialized, other than the downhills, is blowing away the times of the trek, and I'm not even trying yet. And one loop I have, this Specialized, I stopped to correct the air pressure in the front tire, and I still beat my fastest time on the track and I wasn't really in trying. And then I got the new tires on this and with the old tires, I was beating the speed of the track and the new tires, just in the first two runs, I was 20 seconds faster than the big butcher tires in front. So even though this is a much longer wheelbase, So even though it specializes in much longer wheelbase, we'll take a measurement here real quickly. This is about um, 48 or 122, 48 inches to 122 versus put that to about center. This is where the specialized is right here. And this comes in at about uh, 44, 110 and a half. So the uh, truck is quite a bit shorter. And I thought I would have quite a bit more trouble getting through the tight stuff in here. The, the one issue where I do have trouble getting through the tight stuff is the width of the handlebar. <clears throat> this handlebar is 23 inches about wide or 58 and a half. You can see right there. And this one's massive by comparison. This one is 31 and a half or 80 wide. There's a lot of routes that I go through tight trees. And with this one, I just kind of flick the handlebars back and forth. You know, this one, I feel like I'm gonna ram into both trees and go flying. So I kind of come to a crawl and get through the trees or even stop. Some video I have already of where I come up to some trees and I was like, whoa, and I just kind of like have to stop and get through the trees and get going again. So I'll be cutting probably an inch or two off each side because I'm finding myself riding up here in the bars, not near the edge, but way up here. So I'm gonna cut off an inch or two from each side, probably start with an inch and make the handlebars less as wide because I'm just not comfortable with it being way out there just riding in general. I can see if I was doing downhill, that'd be great probably, but I do mostly cross country. <clears throat> I do mostly cross country and I always want to stick with a full suspension bike. It's just so much more comfortable. But anyways, there we are. I want to know what you think about the upgrade. Do you think it was a good one going for the Specialized from the old 9698 Trek? That thing still hauls like crazy, but this one is just so different so more compliant of course the suspension works a lot more um and it's great so what do you think the track oh by the way which has a, of course a fixed seat post versus the stump jumper <clears throat> which of course has the adjustable seat post as you ride and what would you upgrade next or would you upgrade at all 
one thing that I should add is I know this is a single front sprocket and sometimes in the rear shifting you really have a wide range of RPM when you shift versus of course a triple with closer spacing in the back I really would love to try the specialized with a two ring crank set up front but uh, with the way it's designed I don't think that's going to ever be possible. But let me ask you what you think. Would you like to have a double chainring up front versus a single one? And we'll go from there. We'll see you next time on the trails. I do some more trails and record more trails and give better input. And maybe I'll get the uh, XC derailleur set up depending upon all what needs to be changed. I want to understand a lot, including the hub to an XD hub. Anyways, we'll see you next time on the trail. Maybe I'll take this out again. People seem to like this. I remember people saying, oh, wow, Y22 or Y33 Y bike. And the spinnergy really makes it so, really helps suspension too. We'll see you on the trails.